from a massive cruise ship hitting a rock in shallow water and tipping over for the world to see, to a fire on board a ship off the coast of New Jersey that forced hundreds of passengers to jump overboard, here are five of the most expensive cruise ship disasters in history. Carnival Splendor is a cruise ship run by the Carnival Cruise Line. On November 8, 2010, it ran into some serious problems. On the second day of a cruise from Long Beach to the Mexican Riviera, there was a catastrophic failure. One of the diesel generators started a fire in the engine room, which is really not the ideal place to have a fire. The fire soon spread to the electrical cables, and the entire ship lost power. In the olden days, when ships still needed sails, not having electricity wasn't an issue. But for modern cruise ships, it's kind of a big problem. The fire was soon put out, and nobody was injured, but the damage had been done. The ship, which had 4,500 people on it, was just stuck in the water without electricity. There was no way to restore power to the engines, so the ship had to be towed by a tugboat back to California. Since there was also no power for air conditioning or refrigeration, the passengers of this ill-fated cruise had to be fed some other way. The Navy landed helicopters on the ship and handed out rations. I think the military getting involved is a sign that your cruise is not doing so great. All passengers had to be refunded for ticket and travel expenses. And they also got a voucher for a free cruise. I wonder how many of them actually took it, considering how well their last cruise went. The whole incident was rumored to have cost Carnival $100 million. But fires are not the only potential danger for cruise ships. On January 13, 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia learned that there are far more expensive ways to damage your boat out on the ocean. During a planned seven-day cruise, the captain decided to take the ship a bit off course to sail closer to the island of Giglio. This turned out to be a fatal mistake. The ship ended up hitting an underwater rock that caused it to capsize and partially sink right off the coast. There was an intensive six-hour rescue that brought nearly everyone ashore. But 33 people did end up dying in this tragic incident. So how does such a catastrophic failure happen, despite all the technology that ships have now? Well, an investigation blamed the crew, particularly the captain Francesco Scatino, for steering off course. He also left the ship at the first sign of danger, abandoning everyone else on board. He was later found guilty of manslaughter and was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Costa Cruises and their parent company Carnival did not face any criminal charges themselves. The ship was declared to be a constructive total loss by the cruise line's insurance company. The subsequent salvaging was one of the biggest maritime salvage operations in history. Costa Concordia was refloated by welding flotation tanks to its sides. Then it was towed 200 miles back to its home port of Genoa so it could be scrapped. The whole process took five years. The total cost of the deadly disaster, including compensation for the victims, refloating, towing, salvaging, and scrapping, is estimated to have cost approximately $2 billion. Carnival Sunrise, formerly known as Carnival Triumph, has had some less than triumphant moments in its history. In 2013, the cruise ship had a fire in the aft engine room. It was put out automatically by the fire extinguisher system, and nobody was injured. But just like with the Splendor a few years prior, all power was lost. To make things even worse, raw sewage began to back up on the passenger deck areas. Not only did this smell incredibly bad, but it was a pretty big health hazard. It also caused the media to name this whole event the Poop Cruise. It's things like this that make you question the saying, no such thing as bad press. 
Tugboats were originally going to tow the ship to the Mexican port of Progreso. But ocean currents carried Carnival Sunrise so far north that she ended up docking in Alabama instead. After this, Carnival realized that they had an engine fire problem that they needed to fix. They announced a huge, sweeping, fleet-wide review of all of their ships. They put in backup generators on every ship, something which maybe should have already been there. A huge string of voyages had to be cancelled while they did this. And this wasn't even the end of the ship's problems. While it was docked in Alabama getting repaired, unusually strong winds caused it to break free from her moorings and hit another ship. It collided with the United States Army Corps of Engineers vessel Dredge Wheeler. This created a 20-foot gash on the stern. The wind also caused a guard shack on the dock to collapse. One of the people inside the guard shack sadly lost their life in this incident, while the other was able to be rescued. All of this and more caused the repairs of the ship to be delayed even further. In the end, the entire disaster cost Carnival $80 million. The cruise ship MTS Oceanos was a French-built ship that sailed for many years before a tragic final voyage in 1991. The captain, Yanis Avranas, had been a seaman for 30 years, which seems like it would be a good sign. With a real veteran at the helm, how bad could things really get? Well, Oceanos ran into a serious storm. It created such bad conditions on board that waiters couldn't even carry food to people's tables. As the night progressed, the storm got worse. A series of freak waves slammed into the ship, and the Oceanos began to take on water. Soon after that, they lost power, and the engine room was quickly flooded. Oceanos ended up adrift and at the mercy of the ocean. No alarm or announcement of any kind had been made to the passengers up to this point. Eventually, some of them started to wonder what was going on, so they went up to the bridge. There, they found absolutely nobody, which could not have been a fun realization. One of the entertainers on board used the radio to broadcast a distress call until someone answered. Rescue helicopters and lifeboats were sent, and everyone was rescued. Interestingly enough, there is an entire website dedicated solely to this event called Oceanosinking.com. It was created by Moss Hills, one of the entertainers who helped lead the rescue effort. It is unknown why he maintains this website, which includes various details and first-hand accounts of the sinking. The SS Morro Castle was a luxurious ocean liner built in 1930. The ship was known for its popularity, even during the Great Depression. On the night of September 5, 1934, things took a turn for the worse when the ship caught fire and ran aground while traveling from Cuba to New York. 137 passengers and crew members died in this tragedy. The day before the disaster, the captain suddenly and unexpectedly died for unrelated reasons. It seems as though the ship was cursed from this point on. Around 2.50 a.m., a fire was detected in the storage locker. The fire quickly spread and engulfed the entire ship. For whatever reason, rescue from the Coast Guard was slow to arrive. Passengers and crew members soon found themselves in a situation where the deck was almost too hot to stand on, and the smoke made breathing difficult. They either had to brave those conditions or jump overboard. The issue with that was the water was incredibly choppy, and swimming was near impossible. Of the 12 lifeboats on board the ship, only six were launched. It is unknown why the others were not used, as there was enough room for everybody to use them. Eventually, rescue boats did arrive, and they managed to save the majority of people on board. The burnt-out shell of the SS Morro Castle eventually ran aground off Asbury Park, New Jersey. Despite a lengthy investigation into the cause of the fire, one was never determined. The ship was declared a total loss. 
The estimated cost for this disaster was over $4 million back in 1934. The Titanic is by far the most famous cruise ship disaster. Nobody's going to make a blockbuster movie about Carnival Sunrise, for instance. Unlike the other entries on this list, the Titanic was a truly unique ship for its time. When it was built, it was the largest ship in the world. It required 600 tons of coal per day to operate. It took 176 people just to shovel the coal to keep the thing moving. On April 15, 1912, it struck an iceberg and began to sink slowly taking on water for over two hours before finally disappearing into the ocean below. The majority of those on board died, either as a direct result of the sinking or from the freezing temperatures of the ocean water. Ironically, there was a lifeboat emergency drill scheduled to happen on board the Titanic on the exact same day that it ended up hitting the iceberg. It still isn't known why the captain ended up canceling the drill. It's thought that if the drill had actually taken place, more people would have survived. Through these disasters, we have learned better ways to build ships and what to do to avoid making the same mistake twice. Hopefully, there won't be any more major disasters at sea in our lifetime. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.